Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Ambrose Landscape YouTube channel. Thought I'd just do a quick live video since we have some time. Let me get this switched out. We are now in the new shop. I'm extremely excited. And uh, I can go ahead and show you real quick on what's going on in the shop. So this week we got the doors installed. So now that I have my doors installed, I can now start moving in. Um, of course we went with garage door, electric garage doors, not hooked up because we don't have our power hooked up in here yet. Uh, but we do have a battery backup system for that, so that's really cool. Got some few lights in here just so we can see at night. And um, But basically we're talking about me switching to steel. So what happened was yesterday uh, I was working at one of my condos and four of my echo trimmers would not start, would not run, and they all been running like crap. I've taken them down to my place where I get them tuned up multiple times and just constantly keep having problems with my echo stuff. So I finally said, you know what, I'm just gonna, instead of buying new equipment, which I did buy another trimmer <laughs> over there, I'm gonna go return that. Uh, I decided that <clears throat> I'm just gonna start switching over to steel stuff. Uh, a lot of people are wondering why the heck um, am I switching to steel? And uh, you know, a lot of people are wondering because I'm in, I'm part of the, you know, this echo program. Uh, well, a lot of people don't realize just because I'm in a part of the Echo program doesn't mean I can only use Echo. They kind of want other people using other products uh, just because they want to get our feedback of what we like so far about or what we like about other products compared to Echo. That way, hopefully, Echo can change their stuff. So as of right now, I'm switching to at least steel trimmers, uh, and I really, really like the steel backpack blowers, the BR600 I've had since I started my business, and I absolutely love it. Um, so it's hard for me to switch over to the Echo PB770T, even though I like it about how quiet it is. I just have this trust with the BR600 because that thing's been so reliable for me. And I'm hoping that the trimmers have the same thing. I know that every single trimmer, every other company is going to have the same exact problem, but uh, I've given Echo trimmers a long time and it seems like they seem to last at least a year and then they just start to act act up and then after that they kind of are crap so eh. so i went with the uh, km94r uh, i went with the combi system just because i plan on um you know getting the articulating head even the bed rate of finer even though i don't plan on using it but plan on getting it so that i can do videos because they would be really cool to be able to compare steel to echo um, since i've used echo trimmers for so long i thought that would be great but so far, I'm just going to be switching over to at least their, uh, their, you know, their string trimmers. And then afterwards, I'll be switching over to, uh, I'm going to be keeping the Echo hedge trimmers and chainsaw since I have a whole bunch of those. Uh, but basically keep those. And then, of course, like I said, I have my Echo trimmers. I need to return that one because I just bought that. But anyways, that's kind of what's going on. So anyways, that's the little story of steel. But like I said, just because I'm part of an Echo program doesn't mean I can only use Echo. I'm allowed to switch if I want. There's no contract that says basically you have to, you have to stick with us and if you do, you're kicked out. Um, but anyway, so, so far I really liked this thing yesterday. I got to try it, went with it because it's really light, has some good power. Uh, I really do like the off switch about you, you don't have to click it up and down. So if you just click the, uh, you know, the turn off switch, shuts off and then you don't have to worry about you know, clicking it back on um, and then you can start it no problem. Uh, I really like that. The one thing I hate about steel products is their gas tanks. Uh, this is the one thing I hate about the BR600 is that you can never see how much really you have in the tank. So you kind of grab it, go, and then just like what happened yesterday, I wasn't able to finish my whole project. So I had to go all, all the way back to the truck and basically fill up. So anyways, so that's what's going on. So anyways, so that's that. Let me show you the shop. Um, like I said, I got a few more lights in and but mostly the garage doors let me go ahead and take you guys outside hopefully my connection is pretty good so it's raining today so today might be a half day so i've been working on my siding got this all done last weekend and i still have the back section and then that section to do the gable section i'm going to be hopefully doing later this weekend we are using a different kind of product because this is like a james hardy board that we go up to here and then um, we're probably gonna be doing like these shakes so we're gonna have our board that goes across and then go shakes or we may even continue this all the way up and then just keep it the same color but it looks a lot better with that uh, like I said we got our garage doors in so excited went with the two inch uh, depth uh, insulated and of course it's all electrical so it can lift up we don't have any electrical in here yet so 
I've been running my stuff based off of a 10 gauge electrical cord all the way to my power box so it really sucks but eh, it's better than nothing so anyway so that's what's going on so this weekend I got a lot to do I still have the siding to finish I still have the soffits to finish the trims basically all done I just have a couple more pieces and then basically after this we just got to paint it and then we have to um, get it insulated and electrical so other than that and then the house they're starting on the stem walls finally so um, hopefully we'll be getting that soon and uh, basically that's that's kind of it so with the house we should be starting the construction of the house mid-october uh, that's the plan we have trusses coming november 9th the trusses are so far out so i had to order them now before because now they're not they're ordering out to like january so it really sucks let me go ahead and get to your guys' comments i saw a lot of stuff um <clears throat> Let's see, uh, can I get a company business or brochure? I actually don't even have brochures, to be honest, man. I don't do uh, really any kind of advertising like that anymore. I'm already number one or number two on Google when you type in my stuff and then I got my stuff. So I don't even really do any kind of that stuff anyways. And I'm gonna be re revamping the, the business anyways. I think I mentioned that in one of my videos where we're gonna be focusing more towards condo and commercial accounts and i'm not taking on residential stuff anymore so i'm going to be redoing a couple of my low I, I, i've thought about redoing my logos or at least using this logo something a little bit more simpler and not the one on my trailer uh, as you guys probably know the trailer one there's uh this is one thing if you guys are looking at definitely getting designing your own logo um the difference between this you can see that there's multiple color layers so of course we have the red like this gray silver black red white so what happens is that when you get t-shirts, especially if you're getting them embroidered, uh, costs a lot of money because you're doing tons and tons of layers. So you don't really want to do that. You want to try to keep your logo very simple, which is what we did when we did this. Uh, it's just basically extremely simple. So I'm thinking about just having this as my new logo. And um, the one thing that he failed to do was uh, he forgot to cut it along the seams. And so now it's peeling through the whole thing. This side's actually not that bad. If we go to the back side, you can see how crappy it's starting to look. It's starting to look really bad. The stupid bolts are coming out. So anyways, if you're designing a logo, try to keep it to as minimum layers as possible. Because not only will it save you a lot of money, it'll also make it easier during the embroider, uh, if you get things embroidered. Um, so that's one thing I would definitely recommend to you. So we do plan on, redoing that so let me go ahead and get to another question uh let's see but yeah i'm not giving away any of my equity coin i'm probably gonna be selling it because then the money i get that i make from selling some of my stuff i plan on uh buying more you know steel stuff with it uh let's see uh is the only piece you have new yeah so this thing this is the only thing i've purchased so far uh the only other things i use that are still is the backpack blower i love that the sprayers i've had a couple problems with them the steel sprayers are definitely not the best i have like five or six of the stupid things and it seems like um basically i just keep having problems with those things or or whatever so uh let's see we used to not disappointed i i've heard a lot of great things about steel if you guys follow me on instagram i had a lot of guys talk about how they um are happy i finally switched over and it's nothing against Echo. Echo didn't do anything to me, and that's why I want to try to make very clear is that it's not like this program where someone made me mad at Echo, so I said, screw you. And to be honest, the reason why, when I first started my business almost five, almost six years ago, um, I was starting out with steel, but the reason why I went to Echo was because my steel dealer pissed me off because I went and bought a brand new motor from them that treated me like crap, and they still did to this day, so I don't go there anymore. And so because of that, I, I started buying Echo products. I didn't want to buy steel stuff. So I would have actually started my business off with steel, but I went with Echo to like a, basically a screw you to my dealer uh, just because they're a bunch of douchebags. So anyways, whatever. Um, so let's go, let's see. Uh, pop on the spurs, keep going. Yeah, exactly. So it, that's the problem I keep having is uh, the pumps on the backpack sprayers just tend to go out so fast, so easily. And uh, it's just a pain in the butt. And like I said, I have, I have six of the sprayers and it's only because it's cheaper for me just to go buy a brand new one than fix the stupid thing that I buy because the replacement kit is like 50, 60 bucks. 
Uh, that's if I do the labor myself. And now that I have my shop, I can finally start doing labor, you know, start, start working on my own stuff. I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys I, I fooled or whatever. Uh, for the past five years, I've been working out of, I gotta show you this, cause I don't think a lot of you guys realize, for the past five years, I've been working out of trailers and then those sheds. That's, I had two of these sheds out where I'm currently living right now. So all my tools went in there, all my tools went in my trailers, and then of course I built a by 20 shed like a year and a half, two years ago. Um, so I didn't do a lot of the maintenance, at least for trimmers and stuff, that I wanted to just because I didn't have the room, I didn't have my tools all in one place. I had my stuff scattered in three different areas. So if I wanted to work on a project, I would have tools in my shed and then I'd be like, oh crap, I have to go to my other shed because I had this other tool and then some tools would be in my enclosed trailers. So yeah, it really sucks. Um, so now that I have finally a shop, uh, I plan on building my bench back here really soon. And so I was actually gonna do it last night. I might, I might do it today because I, I just did this little table. I'm gonna throw some wheels on it. That way it's easy to move around. So when I'm working outside and stuff, but anyways, so yeah, so that's my little spiel about that. Let's go to a couple more questions. Uh, da, 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 da. Still all day. So, yeah, good news. So, yeah, see, I, I, got a, I got a lot of people saying that they're happy <laughs> switching to steel, uh, which is no problem. Like I said, it's nothing against Echo, and I want to make that clear, is that I'm not doing – I'm still a part of the Echo program that I know of. Hopefully, I'm still part of it. And – they truly do want us to use other equipment because they want us to compare it to Echo. Um, so, and you know, some of the guys that are even in the program are true steel hard guys. You know, they, they run nothing but steel, um, but they still want to be part of the program because like I said, they still want their opinions on their stuff. So that's basically what's going on. But anyways, this is the shop. I'm hoping to start getting some more videos up. The reason why I've been doing a lot of live videos is because it's so much easier where I can record, answer a few questions, and then it gets automatically uploaded straight to YouTube, where right now I truly just don't have the time to record, uh, go home, edit, upload it, just because there's so much going on. Literally, you know, 6.30 I wake up in the morning, which is probably not early to some of you guys. It's, I'm not usually a typically a morning person. Come here, start work, get off work, do whatever work I can on the shop or, you know, till late that night, go to bed, and then basically all weekend, first thing in the morning till it gets dark at night, I'm working on the shop, and soon it's gonna be the house. So how many videos I plan on getting up soon, I don't know, just because basically any time I have, it's with my family, of course, on the business, and now on the house and shop. So anyways, that's what's going on, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and get off. I really appreciate everyone that's um, been on the live video. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the quick little update. The shop's starting to look really good. Let me, hold, let me get one more. I haven't gotten one full shot of the, uh, of the shop yet. So, ooh, there's the shop. Look at, look at, the, look at the garage. Ah, okay. Anyways, so that's what we're looking at. So roof is completely done. Uh, we still have the siding for the peak, the whole back side, and then this side. But anyways, this is what's it. Uh, I was having so much problems with uh, getting things hung up last week. So anyways, um, yeah, I, I'm really happy with how this is working out. We have our curtain, we'll be able to use this. I think I can drive my F-150 on it, but I can't drive my big diesel on this. He said at least until next Monday. Plus we gotta still do the grading for the driveway because you can see that it, it like humps up and then goes down. And that's only because uh, all the dirt that they brought out here, they just piled right here. How much did that shop cost you? That is probably the most popular question I've gotten and I will answer it for you. So far this thing, and we're not even finished with it yet because we still haven't done electrical, we still haven't done insulation. Sorry. That's... Man, I wish I had a gun right now. <laughs> okay, anyways. So far, this shop has cost me just a little under fifty thousand dollars, and uh, the current co or the contractor I was planning on going with, which is a good friend of mine, he told me that I can build this thing for flipping twenty five thousand dollars, and he I don't know where he got that price, but if you guys want me to break it down to you, this is where the cost went to. Uh, concrete alone for curtain and the shop came up to about sixteen thousand dollars. 
Uh, to frame it all, sheet it all came up to 7,000. I got a good deal from my buddy because I paid him cash. Um, for materials, it's come too close to about $10,000, a little over 10,000 with the roof. I did the roofing myself, which saved a little bit of money. I'm doing the siding myself, which is saving a few couple thousand dollars at least. Doing the trim myself, which is a few thousand dollars. The garage doors were $4,000 for both of them. And then basically the electrical, I'm not sure I'm gonna do the electrical myself because uh, that's not too difficult. But basically that's kind of what we're looking at now. So the only other things left to do on the shop is insulate it, um, get some electrical, and then I'm possibly gonna be sheet rocking it. That's probably not gonna be soon. But yeah, so we're looking about over $50,000 for the shop, but the, the value of it, because could have built this thing maybe for a little bit half the price. I could have got a way bigger shop if I went pole barn. No, no bathroom. There's no bathroom in here. There's no plumbing in here. Uh, it's just strictly a shop. That's my bathroom right there. <laughs> it's way out there. Uh, but no, uh, so there's no bathroom in here, no shower. I did at first when I talked to my concrete guy, I told him to put a sleeve in there because if I do in the future want to put water in there, either a sink or whatever like that to you know put uh, put my sleeve, he never put my sleeve in there. So if I run water, it has to run from out of the ground into the shop and then we'll have to insulate that for the winter time. Uh, is your house on the same land? Yes, it is. My house is right there. So it's literally like maybe 150 feet away. So. Um, this is basically it. Um, the house is about a little over 2,000 square feet. The attached garage is about 630 square feet. Uh, single story. You know what? I haven't shown you guys my house plan. So let me show you guys my house plan. And um, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to wonder where it's at. It's actually in the Santa can just because that way it stays nice and dry. So... Okay, here we go. So if you guys are wondering what my house plan looks like, here it is. So we're going with a very simple looking country house. My wife and I absolutely love this. So we got the three dormers up top. We got the attached garage. Um, I think it's four bedrooms. One, two, three. Yeah, four bedrooms. This will be my office right here. And then we got the dining room right here. Uh, and then, of course, the back section. So that's going right here. So it's going to be facing this way. So if you're looking at my shop, this is basically, you're looking at the house like this as well. Um, so, so far we're really excited, finally got this done. Uh, we went and ordered all the lumber for the house. The lumber came up to over $31,000. The trusses for the house came up to $17,000. The concrete for the house is about roughly, uh, once we do a 20 foot curtain out front, you're looking about roughly uh, over $20,000 for that. <laughs> Or around that and then of course we bought the windows and everything like that uh how many acres of land we are on one and uh, a little over one and a quarter acres so uh it's a perfect location it's very quiet uh very safe neighborhood um there are no like a lot of rules the only rules is that you can't have a what's it called a uh manufactured home and you just have to keep up on the street. So perfect for us because then that way, it's not that bad of a neighborhood. It's actually, we know a lot of the neighbors. Um, two of them so far we've known for a while. My, my next door neighbor to me right here, uh, went to school with his kids. Um, the, they were on the other side. We were, we, we know his relatives or something like that. It's a small town, so we kind of know a lot of people. Uh, let's see what people were saying. Anyway, so yeah. So any building permits? Yeah, oh yeah, you gotta get a building permit. Anything over 400 square feet, you gotta get building permits for. Um, the permit for the shop was a few hundred dollars. The permit for the house was like almost $3,000. And uh, anyways, hey, thanks James. I really appreciate that. You are one of the few blue collar millennials out there. Congrats, thanks man, I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's a good thing, it's a bad thing, because it's a bad thing that you can't find good, reliable, you know workers nowadays but it's also a good thing because those of you who want to start a business you don't have much competition because no one wants to freaking work so i i mean my condos i take care of i get compliments all the time from these older people saying oh yeah there's not a lot of guys your age that we see working as hard as you do and it's like well i enjoy it because you know um and then how old am i i am 25 i'm turning 26 in february so just been a lot of uh i got my coffee so it's just been a lot of uh, hard work and dedication, and that's what it takes to get to where I'm at now. 
And to be honest, guys, no one's helped me for my, I've had people give me advice. Financially, no one's helped me. My parents, the only things they helped me towards my business, they bought me a $100 Ryobi blower. Uh, my dad gave me his five by eight trash trailer that we use as a trash hauler up in Alaska for over 12 years. That thing we still have, it's flimsy. Well, I gave it to my brother. Um, and then my F-150, my dad put a thousand dollars towards my truck and then I paid the rest of it off like 4,500 bucks. So other than that, they kind of slowly helped me get off my feet, but they didn't, you know, they didn't give me all this money. I worked hard for where I'm at today. All my tools that you see, everything's completely paid for cash. Um, the only thing my wife and I will owe, cause we're completely debt free. We paid everything off. The only thing that we will now owe is on a house and a garage. Uh, which is not that big of a deal. You know, that's just a normal, you know, payment. So uh, how long have you been in business? Uh, in February, it will be six years. I was, I've been doing this type of work for like maybe eight, nine years, but officially became a business with a business license, paying taxes. It will be six years in February. So, so still a young guy, still a young business. Uh, everything's coming together. Thanks. Uh, who's that? Sean. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. So everything is slowly coming together. Um, it's going to take, like I said, this winter is going to be very busy. The reason why I haven't been posting the videos, I miss posting videos, by the way, guys, I really miss doing the editing. I just really, I truly don't have the time because really whatever time I have during the day, not only am I do, maintaining my properties by myself, uh, but I'm also running around calling contractors, getting estimates, ordering stuff for the shop, for the house. Uh, and then now working on the house, you know, trying to save as much money. Like I said, did the roofing myself, so that saved uh, <clears throat> a couple thousand dollars. Um, doing the siding myself, that saving a few thousand. Doing the siding, the siding on my house alone, I got one quote from my contractor, and it was uh, ninety five hundred bucks. And I thought, screw that, I already have the tools to do it, so I'm gonna just do it myself. Save ninety five hundred dollars. I kind of want to take on the roofing myself, but since it's in the winter time, it's gonna be pretty hard because it's the wet season, so it really sucks. And then doing, I'm gonna to try to do as much of the hardwood floors myself. Basically, I'm trying to do as much of the stuff I can. Uh, do you do snow removal? No, because we get like no snow here. We get snow two, three days out of the year and my accounts already have people to do the snow for them. And there's no point of investing in a plow when I just don't make enough. I uh, did see a couple more questions that I'm gonna get off. Uh, Martin, I think that's how you say your name. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Uh, thanks for the great videos. They have helped me provide service and make informed equipment purchases. No problem, man. I'm really happy to help you out. Um, and I think that's kind of, uh, I think that's kind of it. So the other thing I want to leave you guys before I leave is use email. I cannot express to you how important it is to use email when talking to your clients. I've been using it for years and it saved my butt so many times especially um, about a year and a half ago when I almost took a business to small claims court because they refused to pay me $1,400. I had proof in email that they said they would pay me that and luckily I won and so I got the money. But recently what happened at one of my condos is that one of these ladies, one of the residents was complaining that I haven't trimmed her shrubs in over two years and I had email proof that I sent to my the landscaping chairman that I trimmed them last year. So. Uh, I want to just, that's something I had to experience earlier this week. So ew, my hair looks horrible. Um, so use email. I will do a separate video on that, but email is extremely important to not only keep track of, uh, keep in contact with your clients, but also it will save your butt if you ever do need to go to court or someone refuses to pay you. So anyways, um, I thought I saw one more thing. The steel trimmer, did you buy? Of course I did. I bought this. Yeah. Steel's not sending me anything. Um, and the Echo stuff's been great, but the trimmers, the new, the new trimmer, I, I've tried. I haven't put a lot of hours on it, but I'm gonna really like comparing this thing to uh, to the Echo one, and then this was the KM94R is what I got, so the combi system. So, anyways, guys, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and head out. I got some work to do. I think the rain's coming, so I gotta go before then. And uh, anyways, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching, and I will be sure to see you guys next time on Ambrose Asking. Take care, guys. Have a good day.